السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله الأسكياء وأصحابه الأتقياء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I'm going to read the two verses that we will be reflecting on today the first one is verse number 28 of Surah Al-Kahf, and then the verse after that, verse number 29. In verse number 28, Allah says, Whoever believes and then in 29, Allah says, these are two beautiful verses of Surah Al-Kahf. The Mufassirun, Ibn Kathir ta'ala, and also others, while commenting on this verse, they shared a sabab nuzul a cause of revelation. Now there are multiple narrations here. There is one narration that supposes that this incident occurred in Makkah Mukarramah in the early days of Islam. Sa'ad bin Abu Waqas narrates that narration and Ibn Kathir ta'ala, reports it in his tafsir. That Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas says that there were a group of six people with Rasulullah the earliest of Muslims. Bilal radiallahu anhu was there, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was there, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu was there, and a few other companions. And the Quraysh came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said that, we want to talk to you. We want to learn about your religion. We're interested in this. But the problem is that you constantly surround yourself by these low lives and these poor people. And because of that, we don't feel comfortable being here. These people are outside of our social class. Similarly, Mufti Shafi Uthmani in his Ma'arif al-Quran narrates another incident, but this one occurs in Medina Munawwara, where he says that one of the leaders of Mecca, he came as a delegation to meet the Prophet in Medina, and when Rasulullah met him, he was surrounded by the companions, many of who were not um, from the upper class of society and they weren't uh, economically the wealthiest people. So then that leader also said that, what is this that you're constantly surrounded by these poor people? It makes us very uncomfortable talking to you and spending time with you and learning from you. We don't like it. Get rid of these people. So to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses. And this is a beautiful lesson for us. We'll take a look at the translation in the verse again in a moment. But this is a reflection for us. That people sometimes may say that I'm not interested in Islam because of X, Y, and Z issue. So make the change for me and then I will come to you. Well, that's not the attitude that we are recommended. Uh, and neither is it the right approach to the deen. That when a person approaches the deen, you can't treat this like an Apple store where the customer is always right. When you're dealing with revelation in the deen, you must first and foremost humble yourself. If you can't humble yourself, there's nothing left for you in this. What are you going to get? Today you're being uh, arrogant and dictating terms when um, deciding whether or not this person should be in the conversation or that person can be here. Who are you to say that? If you're concerned about your akhirah, forget everything else. Forget everything. Right? And we unfortunately, many of us have this attitude that I'm willing to study the deen, or I'm willing to do this, or I'm willing to do that, but you will need to fix X, Y, and Z. If the masjid doesn't do this, I won't go to that masjid. The masjid canceled. 
If this is the type of person who's going to be on the board, then the board canceled. We are unfortunately very much entitled, and this ayah of Surah Kahf warns us of this entitlement. That when it comes to the deen, you can't be entitled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like arrogant people. And in order to uh, erase this arrogance, Allah Azawajal teaches us humbleness in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us shukr, gratefulness in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, look at the people who came before and you will see that those that were arrogant were washed out. Read the Quran, study it. It was the humble people that made it into the Hall of Fame of Islam, who made their, whose names were landed in the pages of the Quran. That these were human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved not because of their arrogance, but rather because of their humility, because they were humble human beings. This entitlement, unfortunately, is what will consume us and eat us and ultimately deprive us of guidance. Humbleness is the way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Quraysh who told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remove the poor from his gathering. Get rid of these people who aren't dressed properly. Get rid of these people who don't have wealth. Throw them out on the street. Don't have them when we come. Tell them to come later on. Have a special time of the day where the poor people meet you and then another time of the day where the rich people meet you. We are headed down a path as a Muslim community where it seems as if the people with wealth will have access to the deen in a way that those who do not have wealth will not have access. This is not Islam. In Islam, we offer opportunity to everyone regardless of their social economical background. Regardless, you know, uh, of uh, whether they come from wealth or not. Think of the story of the Prophet Sallallahu when he was an infant and the women came to collect children. And the Prophet Sallallahu was the one who was left uncollected because he did not come from a family of wealth. And then Halima Sa'adiyya radiallahu ta'ala anha, she picked up the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that even though he may not have wealth, but it's possible that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will bring barakah for him. And that's exactly what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that moment, she didn't walk away with wealth. But when she got home, now her animals were grazing beyond the other animals. Her pastures were green. Milk was there available for her to feed her children and to feed the animals. Everything came into place. Everything was now popping because of the barakah factor. And, um, you know, sometimes you go to, you know, Muslim gatherings and they say, you know, um, you know this is a tear for those people in the community who make a particular donation. Now, if it's a tear that's created because you're just trying to class your donors and to honor those who made the sacrifice and appreciate them, there's no problem with that. But if this is becoming some sort of a church scenario where the more you pay, the more perks you get in your place of worship, this is not what our deen teaches us. Quite the opposite. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells us we turn our attention to the ayah of the Qur'an. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِقِ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا And patiently stick with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening. يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا Seeking His pleasure. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ And do not let your eyes go beyond them. تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Desiring the luxuries of this worldly life. وَلَا تُتِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَن and do not obey those whose hearts we have made heedless of our remembrance. Who follow only their desires and whose state is a total loss. Don't be with those people. Don't hang out with those people. Avoid those people. Those people that you see that are sitting in the masjid all day and doing their dhikr. You may have a desire to look down upon them, but don't. Because you, these are people who engage in remembering Allah and invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala morning and evening. Why? They are seeking His pleasure. That's what matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you know, what kind of clothes you wear might impress another human being. It's not something that impresses Allah Subhanahu wa What kind of car you drive might impress other human beings. It's not something that impresses Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are locked in a material world where the value of a person is based off of what they possess. When Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us something different. The value of a person is based off of what's in their heart. So these people are telling you to leave them. I am commanding you, you stick with those people. You will hold on to them. These are your people. Because those people, they will abandon you. The moment you turn against them or you stop giving in to their desires, their arrogance will turn against you. This path is only for those who are humble, who are willing to put their ego aside, who understand that loyalty isn't just being kind and obedient to your parent when they give you a candy or feed you food or fulfill your request. Loyalty to a parent is unconditional, just as loyalty to a child is un unconditional. Loyalty to a teacher, a, person, a student should be available at all times. And loyalty to your Rabb, to your Allah, is unconditional. There's no placing conditions on this. So then, in the next verse, 29, Allah says, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Say, O Prophet of Allah, الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ That this is the truth from your Lord. That's the message. That's the message. That this, what I'm telling you, الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ It's the truth from your Lord. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ If you wish to believe, then go ahead. And whoever wishes to disbelieve, then go ahead. Allah said, so, this is proof right here. That the Prophet ﷺ did not force everyone to become Muslim. There was no become Muslim at, 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 the, at, the, at the barrel of the gun. That's not what happened. That in this world you have ikhtiya, you have the ability to choose, so be careful with your choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna If you choose wrong, then know that. Uh, we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire, whose walls will completely surround them. Suradik are walls. Their walls, the walls of the fire of hell, will surround this person. Where are they going to go? Left, right, you're locked. But it's Jahannam. When they cry for aid, they will be aided with water like molten metal. Yeshmi wujuh that will burn their faces. Bits as sharab. What a horrible drink. Wasa at murtafaqa. And what a terrible place to rest. This is what you get for your arrogance. And then, uh, I wasn't going to cover these verses, but I almost feel like we should at least read through verse number 30 and 31 because we read the warning uh, to those who disobey Allah. And I think it's appropriate to also read the uh, reward for those that are obedient to Allah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So the previous verse was about those who made the wrong decision, whose arrogance held them back. Now let's read about those whose humbleness allowed them to believe in Allah and do good deeds unconditionally. So in verse number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina amanu wa aminu salihat. Indeed those who believe and did good deeds, Inna la nudhi'u ajra man ahsana amana. We certainly never deny the reward of those who are best in deeds. For them, there is there are gardens of eternity. Under which rivers flow. They will be adorned in it with bracelets of gold. And they will wear green garments of fine silk and rich fabric reclining on, uh, on cushions Araik are cushions they will be leaning back against plush cushions what a great and marvelous reward and how beautiful and fabulous is this a place for them to rest may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from these people who make the right decisions in life and saves us from arrogance and ego and protect us from being those who abandon our brethren at the demand of others. Islam 
isn't something that we created. It's not something that we own. This deen belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't turn your back on the ummah. This is what this ayah teaches us. Never leave a person who is in need. If they're sincere, then forget the external. It doesn't matter anymore. What matters is the state of their heart. And once you're aware of that, you never abandon a person seeking taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa